Good morning, everyone. Um, just want to make sure everything's running well. This, thanks for joining me this morning. Um, this is part of my video series as far as the most common questions that patients ask. I'm Dr. Mitra Ayazifar. I'm the owner of uh, Capital Eye Medical Group um, and your ophthalmologist in Northern California and with two locations in Grass Valley and Roosevelt. Uh, I may not be your eye doctor, but I am an ophthalmologist. However, my videos are for informational purposes only and just to educate you to ask more questions from your eye health care provider. So I help my patients achieve the best vision possible so that they can live life fully and enjoy their hobbies for years to come. Um, so I my Facebook series uh, live videos will continue every Monday at 8 a.m. And this is um, Pacific time, so Pacific Standard Time. And if you're watching this live, say hi. And if you're watching this in uh, as a replay, just put hashtag replay. And also, if you want to hear about other subjects in the future, in my future Facebook lives, um, please comment and let me know what you would like to hear about otherwise i'm going to choose it for you so um be proactive about that uh so i the previous episodes have been about um what what to expect as a patient when you come in to see your eye care provider what happens once you are diagnosed with visually significant cataracts and then we've gotten to the point where everything is scheduled the, the measurements are done and um, essentially you have shown up at the surgery center of course you've already arranged the ride you've already checked in the nurses have taken you back to the holding unit and hi kelly hi marty um, they've taken you back to the uh, holding unit. They've started the IV, put the sticker above the eye that we're going to be working on and started putting dilating drops in. The anesthesiologist has come and spoken with you or the, or the nurse anesthetist. And he or she has um, told you that it's going to be IV sedation, which is a gentle um, IV cocktail that you get in order to take away the anxiety and make sure that you're uh, comfortable enough during surgery but not too much that you fall asleep. Um, of course, we have asked you a thousand times which eye and what are we doing, not because we don't know. And again, these are safety measures in place. So today, you're going to, I'm going to give you an idea of what happens once you are taken to the operating room. Um, we either take you with a wheelchair, sometimes we walk you in, sometimes you're already on the eye gurney. But as we go into the um, Operating room is going to be cold because that's how I like it. But we make sure that you have plenty of warm, cozy blankets on you. You're going to have um, a blood pressure cuff that's attached. The um, nurse uh, circulator and the anesthesiologist or the nurse anesthetist will start putting uh, little EKG uh, monitors on you so that we can have an idea of whether or not you're comfortable, whether you're having any discomfort, whether... Um, whether you know you're having any any issues as far as um feeling feeling any pain or just being anxious so that blood pressure cuff is going to squeeze almost every five minutes and it's going to feel pretty tight because it has to measure it um but it won't happen too often but just know that it's all for your uh, for safety purposes so let's see, um, some form of uh, oxygen. Uh, so either through nasal cannula or some kind of um, tube that provides you with um, uh, excess oxygen. And then we, I essentially sit by, your, by the side. Let's say we're operating on your right uh, eye. I'm going to sit towards that ear. I'm going to position the microscope so that I can get a really good reflex of light. I'm going to make sure that my hands are comfortable so that I can um, provide the best care possible and best view. I'm going to turn off the microscope so that would have been quite bright for you. My nurse uh, circulator will put some numbing drops in your eye and then she'll start prepping the eye with beta dye. And mainly it's to minimize the amount of bacteria that may be on your lashes, in the eye, or in, you know, on the eye itself, and uh, also in the surrounding areas. And that's to minimize uh, possibility of infection. And then, of course, um, 
then I, I'm already going to be scrubbed up. I'm going to come in. We're going to put a sticky drape on your eye to um, keep the lashes out of the way. Put a little speculum that keeps the eyelids open so you don't have to worry about blinking during surgery. When I put that in, that's going to feel like a little bit of pressure, especially automatically some patients will squeeze the other eye. So it's going to feel like a little bit more uh, pressure on the eye that we're operating on. So I'm going to make sure I remind you to relax the other eye, keep your eyes open, and that's just going to, you know, help with your level of comfort. And then of course, you know, making sure that you're positioned really well um, as before, and then I start the surgery. I'm going to let you know that you will see different colors of lights, like a wide variety of colors. And that's what my patients tell me, obviously. I haven't had the surgery yet, but at least I hopefully know what to expect. So uh, we were at the point where I was at the point where uh, we're in the operating room. We've started. Um, We've started, I've started the surgery, have done the little uh, incision into the eye. And so the next step is to add a numbing injection, uh, a special cocktail that I always uh, put in in order to make sure that the pupil doesn't start you know, moving down or uh, minimizing. And also it has a little bit of lidocaine in it. So I will let you know that your eyes are gonna feel a little, um, little uh, burning sensation, but I'll let you know to take a deep breath as you breathe out, the stinkiness is gone. And beyond that, you're, I'm gonna start doing the surgery. You're gonna hear the FACO machine, which is the machine that breaks down the cataract, make different noises. Of course, I cannot choose the music of that machine. Although one patient did ask me during surgery, hey, can you change that? Uh, so I can't. But if you want, we can have soothing music, of course, into the in the room. And then, um, then uh, as I'm breaking up the cataract, removing it, and putting in the artificial lens, some patients say they can see the edges of the instruments coming in. But a lot of times, they tend to, uh, you know, just be looking at the at the light. Patients worry, what if I'm not looking in the right place? So I am continuously giving you instructions. I, I am in your ear, basically, letting you know what to do, where to look, and um, you know, repositioning you if you feel a little drowsy and you, your eyes start moving away. So you don't have to worry about that. And then uh, before you know it, the artificial lens is in the eye, we're done, and um, essentially, I would say very, very, very rarely do I ever have to use a suture to close the incision. Um, a lot of times just hydrating the edges of that incision will uh, make it water sealed or uh, waterproof and uh, I'll be done. So at that point, I take out that speculum. You'll be happy about that. That pressure goes away. We'll take the sticky drape off, which will give you almost like half a facial as the sticky, sticky drape is sticky. So I'll try and be gentle removing that. And then we'll put some additional drops in your eyes. Some surgeons may put some, uh, some of that antibiotic, um, antibiotic drops or uh, concoction in the eye. I tend to put it on the eye. So an antibiotic drop, a lot of times I'll put a um, glaucoma drop just to minimize the possibility of your pressure, eye pressure spiking. And then also adding a little touch, little ribbon of erythromycin ointment so that it will help with any sort of foreign body sensation because of the tiny little incisions that I've made. And then after that, we put a little clear shield on your eye. It's gonna be taped in place. You do want to keep that in place at night for the first seven nights, but also if you take a nap and you, you know, just to make sure that you're not touching the eye, especially if you're a heavy sleeper or heavy napper and you're not sure if you're gonna twist or turn or rub the eye, it's probably safest to keep that um, shield in place. But of course, if you're awake and you want to watch TV, you're not going to hurt your eye. None of that is going to bother you. We're going to roll you to the recovery at that point. And your recovery nurse is just going to go some over some information. Of course, I've already given you a booklet of um, post-surgery um, instructions that's going to be in your surgery binder that hopefully you've already read through, but this will be a second time. And then they'll call your ride to come and pick you up and take you home. Now, some patients say, oh, I remember everything when we see them in recovery. And a lot of times the day after, some of that information you may not remember as fully as you used to. So everybody's different. I promise you, you have gotten IV sedation on board. 
um, when you go home, you'll take a really, you know, deep nap or you'll have a nice uh, night's sleep that night. And that's the information I have for you. So if you're watching me live, I see some of you on here, Peg, um, let me know. Uh, if you're watching the replay, please put hashtag replay. And of course this, <laughs> yes, I'll be here for you, Peg. Um, and of course, you're, if you're watching this as a replay, put hashtag replay. Let me know what you'd like to hear about, you know, the coming weeks. Every Monday at 8 a.m. I'm doing this Facebook Live. Hopefully we won't have the, the little glitch that I had this morning because you're getting it in a two-parter. But, you know, life must go on. So I would love for you to find me on, um, on my website. That way you have instructions as far as uh, where to go and how to find me in uh, Roseville and Grass Valley. So my website is um, www.mitramd.com. The name of my practice, Capital I Medical Group. If you want to come in just for a second opinion or you want to come in because you have some questions, call up set up an appointment. I would love to see you. Um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. I guess I'll see you next week, Monday, 8am. Thanks for watching this video and thanks for joining me. Take care.